Hello and welcome to the introductory course on machine learning. In this course, I am going to give you introduction about 50 must know topics in machine learning, which includes algorithms, techniques, packages and modules. Remember, it is not a complete machine learning course. It is just an introduction. Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. In this video, I am going to start first topic of our course. Machine learning engineers and data scientists have been using different technologies over the years. But in the modern world, there is one programming language that they cannot live without and that is Python. The core skills that any machine learning engineer need in order to perform his or her job is good knowledge in Python. Both Python and R languages are used for machine learning, but Python is mostly used due to huge community support. If you have some programming experience, Python might be a language for you. Python syntax is very easy, you can read it verbally and Python is very beginner friendly. You may be an engineering student or you may be a law student or medical student, you can learn Python. Though it is slower than other languages, the data handling capacity of Python is very great. Python language is used for gaming, web development, prototyping, graphic design applications. Before you start machine learning, learn Python, learn about the syntax of Python, learn operators, functions, lists, tuples and loops in Python and learn regular expression. Start solving at least one Python problem a week. As a machine learning engineer, most of your work will be on Python. Second topic for our course is maths for machine learning. Mathematics is very important for machine learning. You have to select right algorithm by considering accuracy, training time, model complexity and you have to consider number of parameters, choosing the right parameter and estimating the right confidence interval and uncertainties, identifying underfitting and overfitting by understanding the bias variance. So you need to have a good knowledge of mathematics. You need to have a good knowledge of linear algebra, calculus probability and statistics. These will be used in many algorithms. Many topics of linear algebra are used in machine learning like principal component analysis, singular value, decomposition, eigenvectors, vector spaces and projections, matrix operations. And from probability and statistics we use concepts like Bayes theorem, random variables and standard distributions. Don't spend time to learn mathematics separately uh, when you are learning machine learning uh, simultaneously uh, learn the concepts which are used in that particular problem. Mathematics is very broad you will not be able to cover all the topics in years. Next topic of our course is exploratory data analysis. It is very important part in analyzing data. It helps us to make sense of our data. Before performing any formal analysis, it is valuable to explore our data. It helps us to understand the pattern of the data in a better way. We can check the correlation between rows and columns. Without doing exploratory data analysis, you cannot fit a model to our data set. And exploratory data analysis is not a technique. It is an approach to how precisely you understand the data. Next topic is data preprocessing. In data preprocessing, we have missing data, categorical data, outliers, and feature selection. When we load a data set, there will be a lot of columns with missing data. In this data set, you can see that in column score and row 4, there is a missing value. It's written as NAN, not a number. You cannot fit an algorithm to a data set with missing values. So, first, you need to take care of that missing data. And next is categorical data. In gender column, you can see that the values are written as MF, it means male and female. Uh, our system only understands numerical values. So these are alphabets. So the model will not understand these values. So first you need to con convert these categories into numerical values. So outliers are data points which differ greatly from other data points. Like in the figure you can see that hundreds of data points are near to each other and few data points are far away from them. So that are outliers. Feature selection. 
when you are working with huge data sets there will be millions of rows and hundreds of columns so you cannot consider all the columns so from that columns you need to select only few columns so you can do that you can do that by correlating rows and columns select the only features which are correlated to each other our next topic is linear regression linear regression is a machine learning algorithm based on supervised learning linear regression is a linear model a model that assumes a linear relationship between input variable x and single output variable y when there is a single input variable the method it is referred as simple linear regression when there are multiple input variables the method is referred as multiple linear regression the blue line in the above graph is referred as best fit straight line Based on the given data points, we try to plot a line that best fits all the given points. The line can be modeled based on linear equation that is y is equal to mx plus c. Ridge and lasso regression are powerful techniques that generally used for creating parsimonious models. Though ridge and lasso might appear to work towards a common goal, the properties and practical use cases are different. You must know that they work by penalizing the magnitude of coefficient of features along with minimizing the error between predicted and actual observations. These are called regularization techniques. The key difference between ridge regression and lasso regression is ridge regression performs L2 regularization that is it adds penalty equivalent to square of magnitude of coefficients while lasso regression performs L1 regularization that is it adds penalty equivalent to absolute value of magnitude of coefficients. Our next topic is polynomial regression. Polynomial regression is similar to linear regression but data points in polynomial regression are in curve shape. If we apply linear regression in this scenario it is not going to give you right value. Polynomial regression is a form of linear regression in which the relationship between independent variable x and dependent variable y is modeled as an nth degree polynomial. Polynomial regression fits a nonlinear relationship between the value of x and corresponding conditional mean of y. Advantages of polynomial regression are broad range of functions can be fit under it. Polynomial basically fits wide range of curvature. Polynomial regression provides the best approximation of relationship between dependent and independent variable. And the main disadvantage of polynomial regression is uh, these are too sensitive to outliers. Our next topic is support vector machine. Support vector machine is a linear model for classification and regression. It can solve linear and nonlinear problems and work well for many practical problems. The idea of Next topic of our course is naive base classifier. Naive base classifier is the collection of classification algorithms based on Bayes theorem. It's not a single algorithm but a family of algorithms where all of them share a common principle that is every pair of feature being classified is independent of each other. The crux of classifier is based on Bayes theorem. Using Bayes theorem we can find the probability of C happening given that X is occurred. Naive Bayes algorithms are mostly used in sentiment analysis, spam filtering, and recommendation systems. KNN algorithm. K nearest neighbor algorithm is used for both regression and classification. When the KNN is used for regression problems, the prediction is based on mean or median of the K most similar instances. When KNN is used for classification, output can be calculated as the class with highest frequency from the k most similar instances. Each instance in essence votes for their class and the class with the most votes is taken as prediction. K nearest neighbor algorithm assumes that similar things exist in a close proximity. In other words, similar things are near to each other. When working with KNN, we need to select the right k value. We run the KNN algorithm several times with the different values of k and choose the k value that reduces the number of errors we encounter while maintaining the algorithm's ability to accurately make predictions when it's given data it hasn't seen before. Our next topic is Ansible Learning. Ansible Learning is a machine learning technique 
that combines several base models in order to produce one optimal predictive model. This approach allows the production of better predictive performance compared to one single model. That is why ensemble learning method is uh, placed first in many uh, prestigious machine learning competitions like Netflix competition and uh, uh, Kaggle competitions and hackathons. Ensemble method is used to decrease variance, bias or to improve uh, predictions. Types of ensemble methods are random forest, bagging or uh, bootstrap aggregating. Random forest uses multiple uh, decision trees to make predictions. Next topic is performance metric. Performance metrics are very important uh, to evaluate our model. So uh, performance metrics used in regression problems are uh, mean absolute error, mean square error or root mean square error or r squared. Performance metrics used in classification problems are uh, confusion metrics and uh, classification accuracy area under ROC curve. Now comes unsupervised learning. K-means clustering is one of the simplest and most popular unsupervised machine learning algorithms. K-means clustering looks for a fixed number K of clusters in a dataset. A cluster refers to a collection. Our next topic is reinforcement learning. Upper confidence bound is a multi-m bandit problem. Uh, it is used to represent similar kind of problems and finding a good strategy to solve them in a uh, already helping a lot of industry. A, a bandit is defined as someone who steals your money. A one armed bandit is simply a slot machine where you insert a coin into that machine and pull a lever and get an immediate reward. It's like in uh, general, it's found in casino. So multi arm bandit is a complicated slot machine uh, wherein instead of one lever, there are several levers which a gambler can pull. With each lever giving a different return, the probability distribution for the reward corresponding to each lever is different and is unknown to the gambler. The task is to identify which lever to pull in order to get maximum reward after a given set of trials. Thomson sampling is an algorithm for uh, decision problems where actions are taken sequentially in a manner that must uh, balance between exploitation, what is now to maximize immediate performance and investing to accumulate new information that may improve future performance. The the algorithm addresses a broad range of problems in a computational efficient manner and is therefore enjoying wide use. Thomson sampling and upper confidence bound algorithms share a fundamental property that underlies many of their uh, theoretical guarantees. Roughly speaking, both algorithms allocate exploratory effort to actions that might be uh, optimal and are in sense optimistic. Our next topic is time series forecasting. Time series forecasting is an important area of machine learning that is often neglected. It is important because there are so many prediction problems that involve a time component. These problems are neglected because it is the time component that makes the time series problems more difficult to handle. When using classical statistics, the primary concern is the analysis of time series. Time series analysis involves developing models that best capture or describe an observed time series in order to understand the underlying causes. This field of study seeks the why behind time series data set. This often involves making assumptions about the form of data and decomposing the time series into constitution components. The quality of a descriptive model is determined by how well it describes all available data and the interpretation it provides to better the informed problem domain. Forecasting involves taking models fit on historical data and using them to predict future observations. Our next topic is natural language processing. Uh, natural language processing is a field in machine learning with ability of a computer to understand, analyze, manipulate and potentially generate human language. NLP is used at many places in Gmail to uh, check whether the email is spam or not, in uh, Google Translate to translate one language to another and YouTube also uses uh, NLP to check whether the comment is spam. Our next topic is libraries and packages in, for machine learning. NumPy. NumPy is a library for Python programming language adding support for large multi-dimensional arrays and matrices along with a large collection of high level mathematical functions to operate on these arrays. Moreover, NumPy forms the foundation of machine learning stack. NumPy is used for creating a vector, creating a matrix, creating a sports matrix, selecting elements, describing a matrix, applying operations to elements finding the maximum and minimum values, calculating average, variance and standard deviation, reshaping arrays, 
transposing a vector or a matrix, finding the determinant and rank of matrix, getting diagonal of matrix, calculating the trace of a matrix, finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors, adding, subtracting and multiplying matrices, calculating the dot products, inverting a matrix, generating uh, random values. NumPy is uh, very much useful in your day-to-day uh, -day machine learning problems. Pandas. Pandas is another mostly used uh, Python library. Pandas is a Python uh, data analysis library and uh, Panda is open source. It's easy to use uh, data structure and data analysis tool. Primary object types of uh, pandas are data frames and data series. Data frames are tables of rows and columns like uh, spreadsheet and excel sheet where uh, series is a single column. Panda function is used to read CSV files, Excel files and links. When you are working on machine learning model, it is very necessary to visualize your data and matplotlib is a solution for that. It is very powerful plotting library uh, useful for those who are working with python and numpy. There are different types of visualization techniques in matplotlib depending on uh, your need. So uh, when you are checking correlations, um, there is a scatter plot, count plot, marginal histogram and marginal box plot or pairwise plot. If you are checking deviation then you can use diverging bars, area chart to check the compositions of uh, data uh, you can go with the uh, waffle chart pie chart bar chart if you want to check distribution then you can go for uh, histogram density plot box plot violin plot there is a different type of uh, visualization technique for uh, different needs scikit-learn scikit-learn is a free machine learning library for python it features various algorithms like support vector machine random forest k near neighbors etc and it also supports python numerical and uh, scientific libraries like numpy skypy scikit-learn is created to make machine learning uh, in python easier in scikit-learn we also process the data seaborn seaborn is a python data visualization library based on matplotlib it provides a high level interface for drawing attractive principal component analysis Principal component analysis is a unsupervised non-parametric statistical technique primarily used for dimensionality reduction in machine learning. High dimensionality means the data set has large number of features. The primary problem associated with high dimensionality in machine learning field is model overfitting which reduces the ability to generalize beyond the examples in training set. PCA makes maximum variability in the data set more visible by rotating the axis. Principal component analysis identifies a list of the principal axis to describe the underlying data set before ranking them according to the uh, amount of variance captured by each. Principal component analysis is an unsupervised learning algorithm as the direction of these components is calculated purely from the uh, explanatory feature set without any uh, reference to response variable. The number of features combination is equal to the number of dimensions of the data set. PCA uses eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Linear discriminant analysis. Linear discriminant analysis is a dimensionality reduction technique which is commonly used for uh, supervised uh, classification problems. It is used for modeling different uh, differences in groups that is separating two or more classes. It is used to project the features in high, uh, higher dimension spaces into a lower dimension space. For example, we have two classes. We need to separate them efficiently. Classes can have multiple features. Using only a single feature to classify them may result in some overlapping. So we will keep on increasing the number of features for a proper classif classification. Linear discriminant analysis uses both x-axis and y-axis to create a new axis and project data onto a new axis in a way to maximize the separation of two categories and hence reducing the 2D graphs into 1D graph. There are two criteria uh, used by linear discriminant analysis uh, to create a new axis. Uh, maximize the distance between mean of the two classes and uh, minimize the variation within each class. Cross validation is a statistical method used to estimate the skill of machine learning model. It is commonly used in applied machine learning to compare and select a model from a given predictive modeling problem because it is easy to understand, easy to implement and results in skill estimates that generally uh, have a lower base than other methods. K-fold cross validation uh, is a resampling procedure used to, to evaluate machine learning models on a limited data sample. 
the procedure has a single parameter called k that refers to number of groups that a given data sample is uh, to be split into as such the procedure is often called k fold cross validation when a specific value for k is chosen it may be used in place of k in the reference to the model such as k is equal to 10 becoming 